everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I want to talk about um, the fact that I know a lot of you are going back to see your families for the holidays, and this may bring up a lot of things. Um, and also, this time of year is a time to kind of contemplate where we are in our timelines, and figure out like who do we want to be I mean that's happening all the time at least in my reality I also feel that the slowing down of the holidays <coughs> creates a lot more space for us to look at this and as a collective as a mass consciousness like all of us together as a collective there's the New Year's, resolu New Year's resolutions where people are looking at you know, who am I in the timeline? How do I want to show up for myself? Who do I want to be, you know? So this is what I'm going to talk about today uh, and many other things. As you know, with my podcast, they kind of go in all the different directions. And the main important thing is the the beingness of being together. Um, so the first thing I want to say is that, like, if you know me... <laughs> through what's happening in my personal life, please know that I'm okay and that I'm safe and I'm very well supported um, by my tribe and <sighs> uh, and that it has taken a lot for me to process everything that's happened. Um, uh, and at the same time, everything's okay, you know? It's like, it's and also it's okay when it doesn't feel like it's okay. <laughs> uh, that's also part of it is going through the challenges, being in the unknown of how things are going to work out. And this applies to every challenge that we all go through, is that it's okay to not know how it's going to work out and to release it from your physical mind. Like, do everything you need to to take action um, in order to resolve it or move through it. I bi a big part of it is, for me at least, is like, who do I want to be in response to whatever challenge I am going through? So this can also apply if you're going to see your family. I've had a lot of you reach out and say like that, um, yeah, that you're going to stay home with your family this holidays and it's, it's triggering, you know, it's like bringing up a lot of childhood trauma and wounds. Like our, our parents, if they have not worked through their own core trauma, um, <coughs> then they, through words, through vibration, through how they treat you, um, pass it on, you know, and without, a lot of times without consciously being aware of it. So there's part of us that, of course, wants our family to understand the trauma that they've put us through, or, or whatever the dynamic is, or who we choose to be in the timeline now. And then there's a part of us that you know, we have to separate their actions and who they are with who we choose to be. This is the part that I think feels a little bit like we're drowning sometimes when we're around our family. I know this was for me growing up is when you are born, you're between the ages of zero and seven, your core personality construct is still being built. And it's usually like a sponge being absorbed by all the people and all the energy that is around you. So this is like, you know, your soul. This is who you are in the <clears throat> in the higher realms uh, outside of this physical reality. That's always there. Like who your soul is, who you are at your core, it's always there. When you come into the timeline when you're born, you choose to forget this in order to learn new things along the way as you re-remember who you are. So in the context of that, like when it comes to your family when you're born, you forget who you are. And so you're affected by every, everyone around you, especially your, your family that you are spend every single day with, uh, and you feel their energy every single day. And this, and then they say it like around the age of seven, your, your core personality construct is like made up of that. And then you spend a lot of your rest of your life trying to re remember who you are and deconstruct a lot of that personality construct that you've built in that first seven years of your life. Um, and so many of us go off into the world 
and remember who we are. Come into our full power. Um, there's like a big storm coming through Copenhagen right now. So if you can hear the wind, I actually really love it. I love looking at all the trees. And anyways, um, so we go out into the world. <laughs> I get distracted by nature because I love it so much. After we leave our family energy and we're able to be more in our own energy, whether we stay in contact with our family or not, if you're able to be in your own energy for most of the time after you leave your family dynamic, <coughs> you're able to, f to come more into the groundedness of who you are. And remember who you are as a soul and who you choose to be in the timeline. And as an ever-growing, ever-changing, evolving soul, right? Like, that's, that's why we're here, is to keep growing. So it's not like this s static, like, this is who I am, this is forever who I am. Like, we come here to, to evolve and grow our consciousness. When we go back into our family dynamic from that grounded place, so say you're going to go spend time with your family this holiday season, uh, it is the most triggering thing it can be. I, I just saying that for a lot of us, it is when we come from these dynamics where our parents want us to be a certain thing. They expect us consciously or subconsciously to act in a certain way and feel a certain thing. At least with my family, it was like not enough that I did what they wanted. My dad wanted us to feel how he felt about everything and believe everything. Like he wanted us just to be carbon copies of himself. This is what a narcissist is. A narcissist believes that <coughs> the people around him are just arms and legs to him. So it doesn't really matter if th that he doesn't believe that they, a narcissist doesn't believe that they have their own reality and their own perception of reality in the soul. Like a narcissist believes that everyone is just part of him and he can treat them however he wants and he expects them to feel and act exactly how he does. <coughs> this was my father. So anytime I ever was going back, you know, I, I moved out when I was 17 I moved out of my dad's house when I was 16 and I moved out of my mom's house when I was 17. And um, <coughs> whenever I would go back to, I was still in contact with my dad until about 22. So there was like five years where I was still in contact with him. I would see him like once a year for like, he got remarried, other family dynamic things. Um, I got married, <laughs> all the things, all the marriages. <laughs> um, and every time I was around him, it was just like this energetic battle. That's all I can put it as like, that's like the simplest way is like, we wouldn't even like say a lot of things, but like, cause my sisters just go along with my dad and my mom just divorced him. So, you know, everyone ha chooses to deal with this in different ways. And for me, I was like, I like consciously faced it. And I even like called my dad when I was 18 and I was like, I don't agree with how you raised us. I feel like you were very abusive and <clears throat> I forgive you. And also I really need to honor that this is my experience. And he actually, he acknowledged it and was like, yeah, well, I did the best I could with what I had, you know? And this is the thing is like most of our parents are not maliciously abusing us, even though that abuse does happen. A lot of it is them just choosing to not face their own stuff and they were abused by their parents or grandpa, or whoever was in their life, and then they just, like, pass it on. And I've talked to a couple of my friends about this recently, because a lot of us are talking about our families, <laughs> you know, because it is the holiday season. And I was talking to a girlfriend yesterday, and she was just saying, like, yeah, you know, like, our parents, like, this is what they went through, and this and that. And, and I was just like, yeah, I, I get that, but I don't accept the reality that, like, like, I understand that the, our parents' generation had less tools than we did, and, like, the energy was more dense around them. And at the same time, like, every soul gets a choice of who they want to be in the timeline, you know? So I still am, like, it's still not okay to abuse your kids. It's still not okay to <laughs> treat them this way and, like, <clears throat> not make a safe space for them to grow into who they choose to be, you know? So there's, like, honoring the experience and honoring like where your parents come from and then there's also honoring your own experience that it's like not okay if they abused you or mistreated you or made you feel unsafe in any way holding those two realities and being in close container with your family w <laughs> um is very challenging <laughs> like i i honor that as well 
um, because it's very easy to when you, especially if you go home and like stay in the same home that you grew up in, it's very easy to like fall back like subconsciously into this dynamic of like your personality construct of you at like seven years old of like however your parents raised you at these very early ages because there's so many things like reinforcing like your room that you grew up in all these memories that you have in this home with your family dynamics that were like imprinted and reaffirmed over the years that you've done a lot of work to re deconstruct you know since you've left home so <clears throat> And of course, I, this, I'm speaking specifically to people who are very different from their family and have chosen to heal their family trauma. And I think a lot of parents did the best they could. I really honor that. Um, I happen to come from a family where <coughs> the best they could was really not great, <laughs> was not good at all. Um, <coughs> and... I feel like people don't speak about that enough. And like I speak about that in the sense of like I've forgiven my parents and my family and also and I I don't carry any if when you listen to this you can really feel I don't carry any negative vibration around it. Like I've really processed the negative energy and like let it go through my body. And also it's okay to speak about it and share about it if I feel like right now in this moment that it could help you. You know, like you're not alone. You're not crazy. Um <clears throat> so I really recommend like if you're in these dynamics where you're going home and you really do love your family but you're very different and like you've probably woken up a lot spiritually and maybe they are choosing not to or they're on their own timeline of how they want to wake up and everyone gets to do that at their own pace we have to pace <laughs> we have to respect the timeline of how people are choosing to wake up spiritually so some resources that I really highly recommend is to spend at least an hour by yourself in your own energy. So if you're staying with your family in a very close container energetic field, to spend an hour by yourself every day. So go into nature, go out somewhere outside of that family dynamic um, so that you can really ground in your own energy. And if you can, I invite you to do it in the morning so that you can set your tone for the day. Like for me, when I'm in situations where, like say I go into a city and, and I need to do, I need to, I'm on a mission mode, I need to do things, I really make sure that the first thing I do in the morning is ground in my own energy. So then, so this for me is like meditation, journaling, breath work, maybe some rape, being in nature, exercising. Like in the past when I was feeling very pent up, I would go for a run every morning, no matter what city I was in. I would always put on my running shoes. The first thing I would do was go for a run. And it really helped me. It was like a meditation for me. It would help me ground in my own practice. And also, I feel that <laughs> running for me at the time was helping my nervous system understand that I could get away at any situation. Because especially when I was in a new city, I would run. I would like kind of walk, run around the city. Um, to explore it and if I liked something I would slow down and like look at the the coffee shop or the bookstore or something and if I didn't like something I would just be like I'm I'm running right now so I gotta go bye <laughs> you know so um, this was really helpful to heal my nervous system from many situations when I was a kid where I couldn't leave you know I was in an abusive situation and I was stuck um, and I wanted to run away so I don't run as much anymore because I love the beingness I don't need to run away from anything uh, but I still enjoy running. Anyway, so I'm just saying this might be a resource for you if you're in the situations. Um, and yeah, and listen to something every day that reminds you of things that make sense. So this could be Abraham Hicks, Bashar, like my podcast, Faraday's podcast, whatever is exciting for you that is the universal message of like, this is who we are in the timeline. We're waking up, we're dropping into our bodies you know, just reminding you, like, it's okay, everything's okay. I just um, picked up again a book called Conversations with God, and it's like, ooh, my connection to the term God has been a journey. Um, I don't really even want to go into that, but I don't necessarily view it as a religious book. It's more like someone channeled something that they claim as God or the universal consciousness and everything in this book is really amazing. <laughs> it's like so grounding for me to read it when I first wake up. So it's called Conversations with God. 
if you want a PDF of it, a free PDF, you can message me on Instagram at Brittany Bond and I'll send you, I'll send it to you. Um, so like something like this could be a really, really good resource for you. Uh, cause for me, like also it's like energetically, sometimes I just get really overwhelmed if everyone around me is super negative and like some people really enjoy like sitting in the negativity. Uh, and my father is one of these people where not only does he want to sit in it, he wants to like connect in the negativity. So this could be like fear of something that's happening in the world or like drama that's happening in his life or just like wanting to trash talk people. And none of those things are things that I love to talk about. <laughs> like none of those things. Um, uh, so I don't really hang out with people that talk about any of those things anymore. Um, but if I am in a situation where I can feel the energy is going like more negative and it's just, it's more like a feeling in my body where I feel like constricted in my chest and like the energy can't flow through because literally what's happening is I don't want to take in this energy. Like every words, every word, oh my God, English, all the words that we speak, when you receive that into your body, it carries a vibration. So this is why like, when you listen to something, even it could be even in a language that you don't speak or understand, but you can feel the vibration in your body. You can feel like, do I want to take this in? This is why even like for me, I love a lot of music where I don't understand the words, the songs, like they're in a different language, but I love the vibration that is coming through. And if you're in a situation where people are speaking very negative words or they carry, the words carry a lot of fear, even if they're speaking it in like a positive way, you can feel it in your body and it can feel like constricted because it doesn't like, it, yeah, it's not uplifting. So what I do in those situations is I, in a very beautifully gentle way, I say, I would really love to hear like, um, like, yeah, I, I love what you got, you know, like, I don't know how to transition. I don't love what you're saying. Um, how do I say this? Oh, I usually say like uh, something I've been really doing with a lot of my friends recently and I would love to hear what you guys are, like what's on your heart with this because I love you guys so much um, is like I would love to hear what you're grateful for, like what brings joy into your life. Uh, and if people are like, oh, wow, that's like a little too deep, you know, you can always because for some people, this is very vulnerable. It's very vulnerable to speak positive things. Um, so if that's the case in your dynamic of the people that you are family with or close friends with, you could even say, and I, I'll go first, you know, like be the vulnerable one. You know, you could say for me, I would be like, I'm really grateful for Afro, my dog and for Faraday, my boyfriend and all my friends and, and the, the ability to, you know, rest as much as I want to and like create as much as I want to out of abundance and this beautiful, island paradise i'm so so grateful for our home here so you know you can feel when i say these things the energy is very heart open very connected and it's uplifting because like whenever someone brings up something positive our brain naturally like whatever you focus on expands so our brain naturally starts like becoming more expanded expanded within that context so we're like wow gratefulness what am i grateful for without realizing it consciously you're immediately going to start being like oh what am i great i want to start paying attention to this more i want to start focusing on this i want to start expanding this in my life whereas if you're around people who are talking about things they're afraid of or things they're complaining about subconsciously you're also going to latch onto that and maybe throughout the rest of the day or the next day you're going to start thinking about things that you're afraid of you know like it puts you in these vibrational states so focusing on what you're grateful for what you're celebrating in your life what you're feeling really passionate about these are all really beautiful vibrations and you know the the more that we wake up <laughs> the more that our vibration uh, is one that is very like beautiful to receive by other people so if you feel that you are without any judgment here, but if you feel you are more spiritually awake than the family that you are associating with, then you probably are going to set the tone for what happens in the dynamic, whether you realize it or not. This is your opportunity. Um, 
because a lot of times we go home and we're like, oh, our parents are just like this or they're just like that. Or maybe we go home and we're like, I want to I want to change them. I want them to be more like this or that. But maybe don't do either of those things. Uh, another option that I want to share is you could in a really positive way just be the light that you want to see in the world you know like ask what they're grateful for share like really positive stories of what's happening in your life celebrate the things that you are learning so don't come at it as like preaching to anyone you're you're not there to change your family you're there to love them unconditionally and by showing them unconditional love while staying grounded in your power this is the way that we can rise up together you know because they will just feel the vibration from you and that already will be activating. That is more activating than anything you could ever say, than anything you could ever preach at them or tell them, like no one wants to hear that they're doing something wrong or that they're, you know, negative. No one wants to hear that. But if you just come there and you're like this really positive beacon of light of like, my life is going amazing. I'm learning all these things. I feel so good in my body. I'm feeling more connected to my body. I'm feeling more grounded. Like this is, this is really activating because people are like, whatever she or he has got, I want some of that, you know, even if they don't ever say it to you. So I have found that, and also this can be also very triggering. So just know that you being like very positive and grounded in your body and in yourself, uh, if people around you are not that, they can feel without realizing it, they can feel judged by it because they it shows the vibrational gap of where they want to be within themselves because everyone wants to love themselves. Everyone wants to be in the love and believe that things are going to work out and that, that everything's possible. And really all it is is that along the way, somehow they got in the fear, you know, and they got stuck in that. Um, so I really view that like, is that, everyone wants this and if I can just be the beacon of light and show them that it's possible and that it's safe to be in the love and that it's safe to feel our feelings um I've been really I went to a family constellation a couple of weeks ago if you don't know what family constellation is I highly recommend googling it it's really amazing it kind of is like a way that we can heal our family trauma without our family even needing to be there and in like a really positive way and in the family constellation um, there's a lot of times where they honor the fact that like time needs to happen or, you know, that there was a time. So basically, wait, scratch that. I went on a different tangent. I want to say this thing. <laughs> Sometimes this happens in my head where I get really excited and I want to say all the things. And then I realize, no, 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 this is the thing I really want to say. Whew. You just got to look into my brain for a minute. Um, Something that really stuck with me in the last family constellation I went to was that for many of us within our family lineage, so like within our parents, our grandparents, like in some way in our family, there was a break off emotionally. So there was like a breaking point of when it was safe to feel our feelings, when it was safe to feel, when it was safe to love, when it was safe to be in this positive energy when it was safe to be in our bodies <laughs> and um, through the family constellation, it's like a therapy session where you can go through the back, the, the lineage of your family and find this, whatever trauma happened um, where there was this breaking point when it was no longer safe to feel our feelings or to be in our bodies and by honoring it and acknowledging it and doing some healing around it, we can, we can heal our families <laughs> Uh, spiritually, energetically, and also be able to be, it's like by doing that and having that understanding, it automatically helps us drop in our bodies more because we're like, oh, you know, no matter how much we say, like, I know my parents love me, but they traumatized me in some way. And then when you go back and like see where they were traumatized or like their parents were traumatized and you just like understand so much more and you have so much more compassion for them then it makes it easier to let that go, like let the process through your body, let it go, release it, and realize that it's okay to be safe. To It's okay and it's safe to feel our feelings and be dropped into our bodies. And then we can go back to our families this holiday season and like 
show them just through the vibration and the energy that we carry and the love that we're showing them that it is safe for them as well. Whew. Let's take a deep breath on that one. I invite you to take a deep breath with me. Uh, so if you're in a space where you feel safe, I invite you to close your eyes and to breathe into your stomach and expand your stomach and imagine that. So breathe in and all the way up your chest through the top of your head, all the way straight to source and sigh out. <sighs> we'll do it one more time. So breathe in through the top of your head. <sighs> and just come into presence with your body right now and notice any sensations that are happening in your body like I notice my neck is a little tight and my legs are saying they want to go for a walk <sighs> and there's some like tingling in my chest And tell your body that it's okay to be in my body right now. And it's okay to feel my feelings. It's okay to be in my body. It's safe to be in my body. <sighs> and it's safe to feel my feelings. And I want to speak to the people who, for whatever reason, don't have biological family to celebrate their holidays with this season, because that's me. <laughs> I don't have biological family uh, to celebrate with. Also, my parents, my family doesn't celebrate holidays. I don't know if you know this, but as Jehovah's Witnesses, I didn't grow up celebrating Christmas, New Year's, birthdays, any holidays. Uh, so for me, it's all kind of a foreign concept. <laughs> um, and at the same time, it's a really beautiful opportunity for people to have time off work, to slow down, to be together, to give themselves permission to just be. And I want to say to you, those of you who have separated from your families or don't have the biological family that you are more than worthy. You are able <coughs> to create a chosen family around you with people who feel like family they're th they're like there is a an energetic connection where they feel like your family and they show up for you in the same way that family does where they have your back when you're sick they show up when you're happy they celebrate with you <coughs> you know that if you fall down in any way in your life that they will be there and that you can be at your lowest point energetically and you know feeling all your ugly say quotation ugly emotion your darkest emotions and they still think you're beautiful you know and they still are there showing up and and reminding you of your power over the last 10 years i have built this uh chosen family uh, a lot of them are s throughout the scattered throughout the world and uh, the highest concentration of them are here on this island this is also why i love Copenhagen for myself because my soul family is here um <coughs> So like for me this like tomorrow there is a 25 30 of us getting together at a very good friend's house and we're celebrating Christmas together you know we're being together and then some of my friends some of my soul family are coming and staying with us uh for Christmas and New Year's and yeah it's just like there's actually so many amazing gatherings to go to that today I'm taking the day off <laughs> and of like connection w externally with m even my soul family because I know that in the next many days I'm going to just be one big cuddle puddle blob with everyone in the best way possible and uh today I'm just like grounding in my own energy I'm gonna go into nature soon um but it what I'm saying is I have an abundance of family vibes around me and I feel so grateful for that and I'm here sharing this with you that you also can have this too 
and you build them one by one. So it's not that you sit there and you're like, I don't have them. I don't know what to do. No one's around me that's like me. You can make a conscious choice. I choose to have a soul family. I know that they are there, out there in the world, looking for me just as much as I'm looking for them. And I am open to receiving them. And then they would show up in your life. I There's so many stories I could share of the beautiful synchronicity of how I found every single one of them. And some of the stories make me want to cry because I know it is straight from the universe. Like there is no other way these people showed up in my life in a logical way, like from my physical mind. Like this is straight from my higher self and their higher self. We made a soul contract before we came down here and we found each other. And there's been so many moments with my soul family where we're crying, laughing, happy, hugging each other. Like I'm so happy we found each other, you know, like, ooh so happy we're not alone in this anymore and i wish this for all of you and if you have a biological family you can have both you can have your biological family and your soul family like you can have everything abundance 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 you know um but just build it make it feel good in your body all the way through take the initiative and also be open to receiving it Uh, i know for me i'm such a community builder that i in the past have actually realized that I was so much giving to my community and building that I wasn't allowing myself to receive the love as much like I wasn't allowing people to show up for me because I was so used to doing things on my own I was so used to people not showing up and me having to have my own back that when people actually were offering to show up for me it was like almost too vulnerable to receive it because I was like what if they don't what if I say yeah you can come and help me and then they don't come and like that would hurt me so much it was like too vulnerable to open up so I faced that I worked through it and I allow people to show up for me and it feels so good it feels so so good it's so healing okay that's all I have to share I'm gonna go into nature now with Afro and Faraday and send you guys all so much love I hope you have an amazing uh Christmas, New Year's, whatever, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate, I hope you have an amazing beingness and allow yourself, give yourself permission to just be and it feels so juicy in your body around all the people you love. Have a beautiful day. Bye.